healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. that are preaching false gospel. There's a lot of people out there that are preaching uh, things that are not biblical. And that's why the thing is that we cannot persecute our brothers and sisters. It's in the Bible that we're uh, uh, fighting not against flesh and blood, but principalities and that we cannot see it. Principalities of darkness. And we got to understand something. Sanchez, 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 to have that relationship and know the Lord's voice. He's the best GPS you can ever have. I can't stay in the valley because the God said I'm going to prepare a table with the presence of your enemy. I gotta come out of the valley so I can see the haters sitting at the table watching me eat. So I can see the haters and the enemies watching me be blessed. For sure you to stand in the face of the adversary and they're having a staring match between the lions looking at Daniel and Daniel's looking at the lion. My first reason why I feel like the lion didn't want to eat Daniel is because Daniel is a man of character, a man of integrity. He's a man that's consistent. He's a man full of God and God is in Daniel. God may not restrain it, but he'll sustain you in it. Look at somebody say, neighbor, I'm only standing with a praise in my mouth. Come on, with a dance in my feet because God sustained me. Hallelujah. You don't see the pressure. Come on, you don't see the problems. You don't see the pain. But the reason I got a praise is because even though that he didn't restrain it, he sustained me in it. See, so don't judge people by their praise. Come on. Some of you are afraid to shout because you're afraid of what people may say about you. But baby, if they only knew your pain, they would understand your praise. Share with you, yeah, and your family, family, the love of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives. Say it like I wanted you to say it. Y'all got to put some oomph into it. Come on, come on. Because let me tell you something. Before you got saved, if somebody cursed at you, just think for one quick second, what would you do? Well, if somebody, there you go, Brian. There you go. For, especially for the ladies. Y'all already know that that B word is not a very good word to call a young lady. Well, and that's called fighting words. 
And if somebody called you out of your name, what would you do? You got it? All right. So we're going to say, say it one more time. Say, Satan. Satan. You better stop cursing at me. You better stop cursing at me. All right. Amen. Glory to God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Whoosh. I'm telling you. Curse. Words. Includes. That you are speaking. You're speaking words. That may harm somebody. When you're cursing, your 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 intent is to inflict harm, pain. You, you're there to damage them in some type of way. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've cursed before. Yes. Oh, th th please, y'all, don't 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 do that to me tonight. Yeah. Don't sit you, please. Don't make me call you out. Don't sit you. Some of us are still saved and still cursing. Come on now. Oh, come on now. Let somebody get you mad enough for what you're going to say. All right? Cursing, saying a cuss word, happens to be something that we do when we're angry. We're frustrated. Or somebody done hurt us. And put us in a bad position. My God. And sometimes we don't understand that cursing can cause damage to the individual that we're speaking to. Sometimes word curses can linger. Yeah. Like a skunk that sprays you. It's a smell that never ends. Wow. You can describe it as a venereal disease that seems like it never wants to go away. You got to get medicine for it. You got to go to the doctor. You got to find out what kind of disease it is. And according to some people, when HIV first came out, there was no cure for it. So, Sometimes cursing can put, put cursing, cursing someone can put them in a position where they feel like there's never a cure for the word that you said to them. So you say it to somebody, you're clumsy. You're just so clumsy. You'll never amount to anything. Am I hitting somebody? You'll never change. Mm -hmm. You're going to be just like your mother or your father. Okay. These are just simple words that we say to one another. Or these are simple words that we say to our children. Because we're angry. Okay. All right. You'll never find anyone to love you like I do. I wish you were dead. I wish you were never born. Those are words that we say. And you say, that's not a bad word. I was just saying how I felt. Mm -hmm. Come on. But you don't realize you're cursing. Yes. 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 The very thing that you say you love. Come on. Come on. Like I tell parents all the time, as a mother, you have to be careful what you say to a child. Yes. Because that curse word, that I don't love you, or you'll never be anything, or you're just like your father can wait on a child. Yes. And it'll push them into their adulthood. Yes. And they'll make them think that I'm just like my father, or I'm just like my mother. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody will never love me. Mm -hmm. You'll be so surprised. They'll be in their late 40s, and they still remember mm -hmm. the curse that you placed on them. My God. Good job. Glory to God. Cursing versus cussing. Placing a curse obviously is not the same as uttering curse words. 
Yeah. But both concepts start with Christian church. We say we are kingdom people, but we don't have a problem cursing one another. And you say, I'm not cursing, I'm not using bad language. Anytime that you tell somebody, well, you'll never be nothing without me. Uh, well, your anointing is not as great as mine. Uh, you'll never be bigger than your master. They, it's in the Bible, but they use it out of context. It is in the Bible. You got to read your Bible to find that down. It's in the Bible. It is. But they use it out of context. They use it for their own gain. So you got to be careful. This is why we encourage kingdom people to read their word. So when people begin to start cursing at you, you know, I, I, no, I don't receive that. Amen. Right. I can't take that. I'm sorry. That doesn't apply to me. Maybe that's for someone else, but it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Cursing. Are you cursing today? Or are you allowing the enemy to curse at you? See, we don't realize we can curse ourselves. And you say, well, how can I curse myself? Because when you tell yourself, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'll never be yeah. nothing. You just curse your own self. Because life and death is in the power of the white tongue. All right, y'all not catching it. It's in the power of the tongue. It's in the power of the tongue. Every time you tell yourself, I can't, then that's exactly what's going to happen. You won't. You won't be able to do it. The moment you tell yourself, I don't think I can do this, well, hun, I'm here to tell you that you won't. Amen. I'm broke. Ooh, I hate when people tell me that. Help us, God. <laughs> because you know why? You will always be broke if you keep telling yourself you're broke. Amen. If somebody comes to you and says, oh, do you have $20,000? Oh, not right now. Because see, I don't know what's about to happen in about 10 minutes from now. I don't know what's about to happen tomorrow. Walk into something that'll get me forty thousand, and I can give you your twenty, and I can give you one. All right, all right, y'all. Are you catching it just a little bit? Stop saying you broke. Just say I don't have it right now, because you're not lying. You don't have it right now. You don't have it in your head. But what's going to happen in ten minutes? Because what? Don't push me. Don't push. Don't push. If you would turn with me to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 29. When you get it, say amen. You know, I'm not going to make y'all stand if you don't want to stand. You know, a lot of people do all this religious stuff. But let me tell you something. But your character stinks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh -huh. verse 29. Yeah, y'all can do a lot of religious, all this convocation, and that's beautiful. But are you living right? Are you sleeping with a man and you're not supposed to be? All right then, come on. Because if we're going to do this thing, we're going to do this thing right. If we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk right. Come on. Amen. Amen. I have to be honest with you. It's no need for us to preach and teach the word of God and we don't live it. We must learn to live it. You got to live this thing. And I'm not talking to just the leaders. I'm talking to the seat warmers. I'm talking to the ushers. I'm talking to the trustees. I'm talking to the bishop. I'm talking to the apostle. I'm talking to the prophet. I'm talking to the man. I said you got to strive to live right. Amen. 
That means you can't keep going back to the same thing that pulled you under. When God brings you out of the muck and mire, it ain't no need. That's not a ticket for you to go back. I got to go back and I got to save people. I got to go back and help somebody. No, you better get you together first. Because yeah. see, let me tell you something. When you go back to get somebody, it's more demons yeah. that come along with it. It's more problems that come along with it. So you gotta be careful when you reach back to go get somebody from the hood. Oh, all right, all right. Y'all gonna stay. Okay. Whew. My God. Okay. <laughs> Jeremiah, are you laughing at me? Lord Jesus, they laughing at me. They laughing because they know, listen, I... I ain't got time. We're going to tell the truth up in here. Come on. All right, all right? All right, all right. All right, all right. Can you hand me my phone, Pastor Shannon, please? Because I have it. Okay, wait a minute. I got it. I got it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Well, but only what is helpful for the building up, building others up according to their needs. That is, that it may benefit those who listen. That it may benefit those who listen. So you got to be careful because people are listening to you. So we got to be careful on what we say to one another. We say things to one another and we, oh, I didn't mean it that way. You got to be real, real careful because what's happening is you say things and it causes people pain. We got to be careful on our conversations. We have to be careful how we treat one another. We have to be careful how we approach one another. Sometimes when you see a sister or a brother doing something that's not of God, sometimes you just got to say, God, God bless you, sister. How are you doing? God bless you. Can, can I, it's okay if I talk to you. Ask for permission. Is it okay if I speak to you? Because I saw something and I just wanted to bring it to your attention. If it's all right with you, give them an opportunity to talk. That's a conversation, y'all. You got to give them an opportunity to respond. Yeah. I said give them. <laughs> because church people will talk you to death and don't give you an opportunity to respond. Uh, well, uh, you better say so. Uh, yeah, church folk, religious people will talk you to death and won't give you an opportunity to respond. You ask for permission because he or she may not be ready to receive the word. Because a good word in the wrong season can cause a problem. Sometimes every, you got to remember everybody's not on your saved path. You're, you're, found, you're, you're saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled foundation. Everybody's not there. You got some people that are still striving. They're still trying to come out of a mess. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to ask for permission. That's right. Because what you can do, you can cause him or her to turn away from salvation, right. which is free. That's right. Which is free. Amen. It's free. No strings attached. You will cause them to turn away from salvation. This is why we have so many people who are not willing to come back to the church house. Y'all so busy worrying about COVID. It ain't got nothing to do with COVID. It got to do with your mouth. She didn't have to laugh that hard. <laughs> but you'd be surprised of the pastors. And, the, and I'm going to tell you something, apostles. Let me, let me straighten y'all out for a second. Just because you're an apostle doesn't mean that you're right. Wow. It does not mean that you're right. You can be wrong too. And a lot of times you will have always been wrong. But because you are used to people that are, are always... Yes, apostle. Yes, apostle. Yes, apostle. Yes, pastor. Yes, sir. You like them kind of folks because they sanction everything you say and do. And what happened, team? 
them and then want to preach to them and tell them things later on. It don't work like that, y'all. Right. Oh, Jesus. We got to live right. We got to talk right towards people. We got to want to get healed. Let me tell you something. It's all right to be a leader and still need healing because I'm a work in progress every single day. This is why I said, Father, forgive me for I have said Yeah. 
on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.